Hey everybody, this is the uh, this is the condensed version here. If you didn't want to sit through the whole other thing of uh, of the the whole uh, renovating uh, Daphne the sport, uh, this is just the painting a patina process. This is the painting a patina VIP variants in production. So I'm gonna try to have this one trimmed down to just the parts where this gets painted and we're showing it i mean it fits so tight now uh we're showing it right here from the outset there it is so if you think it looks like uh hot garbage uh you can save yourself the time and uh not watch the rest of it if you think hey that looks pretty good what did you paint that with you can do this paint job without going to a hobby shop. Everything to paint this, you can buy at an auto parts store, home improvement store, wherever. So it's an imperfect process. And it's my first time ever doing a patina. And I think it came out, I think it came out pretty good. Not, not to pat myself on the back too hard, but I think it came out pretty good. So if you're here just to find out uh, how to do this, I mean, there's pl there's plenty of guys that can probably instruct you to do it better, but I th I think I did okay for a first try. I think I did okay. Uh, if you want to see the whole thing with the wheel time with uh, uh, Daphne the sport, you notice uh wait uh, uh, converted to an outrunner, uh, all sorts of modifications done to her other than just the patinaed body. But if you want to see that, that's in another video. This one is just the patina portion uh, for folks who like their their chunks a little more bite-sized. So hopefully this won't be too long and we'll get to the point of how I got here. And I'm most pleased with how the roof came out. I, I think the roof came out tremendously. So there you have it. Hope you enjoy. Preemptively, uh, thanks for watching. Comment below. Drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, enjoy the rest of it. patina finish on the body seems to be pretty hip right now and uh much as i don't care for painting bodies uh that's why you'll notice everything around here is primarily single colors i was really happy with how zoidberg the capra came out so we're gonna give it a try and we're gonna do it my way, which is uh, auto parts store rather than local hobby shop because my local auto parts... I have two auto parts stores within like three miles and uh, my nearest hobby shop is 45 miles away. So, the base coat for Daphne's new Creep-er, I think they call it the Creep-er, is going to be silver. So, if you've seen any of these patina videos, you paint the inside and the outside base coat same color. Uh, some people do gunmetal, some people do that. I'm just going to do silver because when I painted the def the green defender shell, I did it green on the outside, silver on the inside. So when it gets scratched, you can see the silver. Then they all seem to go over the exterior with a layer of white, I guess. So when you buff through, you get like highlights, I guess. Then there's salt and uh, I can't find the, the thing of, like, table salt. So it's going to be Himalayan pink salt on this body. You know, why not? We're not using RC paint, so it might as well. Uh, it's got a grinder. It should be fine. Uh, you need a, a, a spray bottle of water to make the salt stick to the body. Then I don't have any sort of RC-specific paint that is... For the, for the rust layer that will go over. So, you know, that goes first, second, third. So then fourth over that will be Rust-Oleum Red, because if you're painting over an already polycarbonate-specific paint, you can use whatever. It doesn't matter. And then for her final body color, over top of that, I don't know. Uh, when I do window masks, traditionally, uh, I, I, I don't bother with soap and water uh, as it takes so long to dry and I'm wildly impatient. And then what I do is I end up washing the whole body 
and then I get my fingerprints all over it, uh, putting the masks on. So I just do denatured alcohol, wipe the area down that I'm working on because it's going to need washed again after it's sanded, only I don't sand it. I'm a huge fan of four-aught steel wool. This, this is what I use to buff the insides of bodies because it gets up into like creases and corners uh, far better than sandpaper ever could. I do recommend put the inside masks on before the outside masks, which is also an easy thing to recommend as I just leave the overspray mask on until I'm ready to put the other masks on. Then I get, in this case, all eight masks. I don't worry too much about super accurate placement. Uh, for the exact reasons one would expect me not to worry about it too much. Which is, it's only a short matter of time before this, you know, looks like this. There's, there's, there's really no way around it. But I do like matte. So I like a matte finish. So I'm just, you know what, this, this I, I don't know who I'm fooling. So, what we get is what we get. You know, a little more time and care, and all of you out there in the virtual world can achieve a better result. I'll likely achieve, uh, achieve a better result than what I will. Look at that. That is terrible. Um, but, you know what? From six feet, I think it will be amazing. But I did remember that I will be at least getting some hobby stuff injected in here. Uh, I've got Tier Schwartz, uh, Tar Black from Ravel, uh, which I will be using for the dry brushing. As most of the people use the Tamiya, is it Tamiya? Yeah, it's the Tamiya like weathering palettes. Uh, a, I don't have any of those here. Uh, B, I wouldn't even know where to get them, uh, aside from ordering them on the internet and wait another week. And uh, this body is going to be finished in this video. Uh, there's aluminum uh, for any metallic highlights. I'm hoping it will be a good match. So what won't be uh, explicitly shown, but what will happen here is you go like this a lot. And because we're doing both sides, uh, you do it inside and out. And uh, four out leaves a nice, I mean, I, I feel like, like that's enough. Uh, for the patina stuff on the outside, I am going to want more, like, like a deeper cut. I think this is, honestly, and I think we got a good cloud on there. Uh, I obviously have a painting area. It's outdoors in the fresh of airs. Uh, I have this guy which uh, had very mixed Amazon reviews, the I Can Mix. And uh, you'll see it's got some nuts and bolts and washers. Uh, it comes with a little welded part on there, and all the negative reviews say that part's just going to break off. And they're not wrong. It did within the first month or so. But once a can is warm, you get a very rewarding feeling. I mean, it, it really does mix paint extraordinarily well. Uh, I do this for about 30 seconds. Uh, which I did off camera. We just, first coat is dust. So I do that. And then I take this back out and set it back over in the sun. And honestly, I generally go 10 to 15 minutes between coats, like flash coats. It'll be two to three coats on the inside two to three coats on the outside. So uh, we will do a small cursory wipe down of the outside. Like I say, I feel like it's all part of the patina. Um, if there's some spots, paint doesn't adhere as well as others. I think I'm absolutely fine with that. 
So again, this is just like it was before, only I try to touch it less. Just very light. It does give a very nice, even uh, silver color when painting from both sides, I must say. I think that's probably good. I'll do another dust coat. I can leave this right here because we've got some sun. I'll do another dust coat of that. And then I, I, think, I think it's fairly consistent. It's very difficult to say as uh, it's uh, silver on the outside, silver on the inside. Uh, it looks pretty even. The color of the paint looks consistent. So let us go scratch out there. just oh it's not it's 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 not gonna take much white at all yeah and of course after this is the part where it can all go terribly wrong so I will do this in two coats try to get a sort of even consistent coating of white on there water Yes, the Himalayan pink salt. Um, the grinder gets it really fine, like powder. So I figure, I don't know, I don't know. We can go through a, a variety of grades. And then the, uh, this actually concerns me every bit as much as the fact that I'm using a Himalayan salt grinder because I can't find any regular table salt. Okay. So, I'm just diving in, you know? Get it a little wet and a lot of wet. Let's go, let's go middle salt dot here. Oh, well, it's easy to see. It shows up well. And you know what? Now that I'm seeing med medium salt dot, we're gonna go to a, uh, we're gonna go to fine salt dot. That is, uh, that's crunchy. Oh yeah, there we go. That, I don't know. That feels like a lot of salt. Uh, I don't know how well it's showing up. I feel like it's showing up pretty well against the white. Uh, and uh, here we go. This this is officially uh, the Rubicon. How heavy do I go with this? I'm not sure. It, it looks insane. It's making all the water droplets run down. Uh, I feel like I should probably do this in multiple coats. Oh, look at that. That's crazy. It doesn't look as awful as I thought. Um, was I supposed to wipe some of the water off? I don't know. Um, we're just, we're just going to, we're going to keep going right at it. Just like this. Um, good old shop towel and, uh, wiped the salt off and I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy looking. Um, the paint appears to have cured perfectly. Uh, actually, when I was rubbing it, uh, I could kind of buff the lines and get the red to come off, which is, uh, I think, why uh, we, we do two applications of the salt. Let me get the side. This side, I think, is perfect. Uh, only got the micro fine on the back. Like, look how look how fine those dots are. So this is kind of a uh, so. Let's try to get in here. Cover it all over again. I am just going to do a single coat of red oxide this time around. I do like how a can of Rust-Oleum sprays. It really, it really puts it out there. So there is pretty much second salt. Yeah, I definitely went a little more the, now the I think we've made it through this portion unscathed. Uh, 
just make sure I get all the little edges. All right, I'm 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 already feeling pretty good about this decision because honestly, uh, I think, and this is just one lunatic's opinion, but even without doing the weathering, like I like that. I, look at look at that. Does it have enough light on it? Like that. That looks really cool to me. So. So I think I'm just going to go for a, a. Like. Not high gloss. Full finish coat. I still want to see a little bit. Of the. The red. Coming through. Just a little. Honestly, I think I think this might be a one coater. Just have to make sure I don't have any big missed areas. I, I can already see the back of the fender right there. I'm thinking I'm thinking we're there. But I think I think there we have it. And I think now it just has to have another sunset, and then uh, it's sandpaper time. I like this textured look, and I haven't even taken sandpaper to it yet. I'm going to, I'm going to assume uh, wet. This is good old 400, and I would think you start on stuff that would be more exposed. And then I want to kind of try to take the rust texture down a little bit, like get it, get it more smooth. So it'll be this process working nice and slow. Yeah, I think, I think I like it. So it will be that process. But I want to get, you know, I want to get that, the rough knocked down to a little smoother. Get the high lines, a little more rust or white showing. And uh, this is going to be a uh, time consumer. And you can see it's very easy to remove material, to remove the blue. I got a little over aggressive there. So what I generally try to do, keep it a little wet and then try to take that all the way down to silver. We'll get a nice silver spot there. And then I do have the opportunity to touch, because like, to me that's overly white at the moment. But I have the, oh, the opportunity to touch that up, but like very, very little pressure on the sandpaper. Because it's so easy to just pull it down to the white and actually even to pull it down to the silver kind of looks the best. So you get right in here and this is where the salt was really fine. Like that's, that's so good. I do have a matte clear to go over this. So everything, after everything's all done, it will get the matte clear. It can get out of hand. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it becomes really quite addictive. Uh, just like sanding more and taking a little more up here and a little more up there. And I got to a point where like, I don't know, uh, it, maybe it's confirmation bias, but I feel like that rust, that rust looks like rust. Uh, I kept trying to get more off right there. And uh, I don't know. Uh, but what this guy is great for is you can get right in the panel lines and you can kind of just scribe down through the top colors because you have to remember there's so many coats on here and they went on so close together that it's like you're really digging through the paint and uh, when you get to like little lines like this 
I don't know. I think for for me, it's those little details. Now, then pick a spot where you think rust would come, and you just kind of. I go over that, and that's heavy. So we uh. So I do the same with silver. Don't want to get too. I realize we're out of frame here. Uh, I don't want to get too much on there. And sort of the same thing. Like it would have a little, put a little, a little across there, and then just kind of blend it in. And that, that's kind of the method I've always used. Forgotten, then remembered. Uh, I had forgotten that I have these, like, auto body specific scotch brights. Uh, you know, for painting things. So after I scribe the line, as you can see, I mean, that line is quite chunky. You get in here with this guy, and you just... And I don't know, it's like a, uh... It's like the smudge stick for graphites. It uh, it really just smooths everything out. Uh, I'm really liking it. Uh, the center here, this was rust and silver. Uh, rust and silver all along the nose. Uh, some silver here through what was white. I think, I think my best work is right there on that top corner. That looks that looks quite natural. The scribing of the door frame looks great. I want to get a little bit of darker in there, so I might open up the the tar black. Uh, like I got a perfect dry brush. Ignore what's on the mask and just look at the bottom edge of the window there. There's like a perfect dry brush of worn silver there. Some of the little bits on here look fantastic I mean they're incidental I love the roof uh, it's it's really coming along uh, and you know does it take time yes would I consider it time consuming no it's just like this is the most fun I've had doing a body in a long time because it's not about masking it's not about crisp lines it's not about any of that it's just about like what feels right? I could leave it right like that and be content with it. It, it, it's, it has grown on me already. Look at that rust on that door. I mean, it really needs to be out in sunlight to, to catch it. I just, I want to get some more detail on there. And, oh, I got to find those decals and put the decals on. And, uh, get the, uh, get the, like, get some dry brushing over that. Get some more around the windows. We've got three colors out now. Uh, I had taken the tar black, mixed it about hmm, maybe three parts paint, seven parts water, guess guesstimatingly, and I was using that with the fan brush with just the tiniest bit on it to uh, employ uh, the finger technique to take some of the brightness down. Get a little on there. Just kind of, just kind of work it in. Then, purely by accident, uh, the brush that I was using for rust, the rust paint, had uh, hardened up. So I took that brush and I kind of dipped it in the tar water, and it gives this wonderful patina color, which I do the kind of the same thing to try to tone spots down, like where I think the, the white is too stark. And it just, see this is, it's in, it's in proper dry brushing mode now. And if it looks like it's getting a little too defined, then just kind of spread it out. And I've just kind of been working over the whole guy like this like if I think that's a little too bright I'll just get a little get a little on there move it around a little and like even though I'm wiping most of it off it's still really calming down how bright that spot is I don't think it wants to be that bright 
So like if I wanted to go across there, see it just takes it down. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. So the thing is, I'm gonna have to find a point where I make myself stop because this to me this this is better than painting any body even though I am painting a body I think the decals look fine uh, like I feel like it needs some black in it so I was hitting it with the with the kind of wash along those lines to give it a little give it a little shadowing there's always a point where the brush is just perfect and you can just like okay if I want to take that down so good so good my my offering of patina paint job is not like other folks uh, like oh okay uh, I did want to mention th this it occurred to me a little bit ago if I were to do this again with the rustoleum red oxide what is serving for the rust uh, i would just do one coat because that stuff is so like you know it's designed to be sprayed on rusty metal so it was in in a lot of spots it was very difficult to get down to the white so if you're not using a tamiya rust and you're just gonna buy paint at the auto parts store and the home improvement center uh, I would definitely recommend uh, one coat of the red for the rust. I mean, I think it's the absolutely perfect color. I think it looks like rust. I'm, I'm nothing but pleased with how this came out. Uh, I don't think it's going to be fully cured for about five days. Uh, there are spots of <laughs> particularly thick paint where... Uh, like, I don't, it feels like you could scrape it off like crayon because it was just coat, 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 coat. And, uh, I think it's, I think it comes down to that rustoleum in the middle, which looks absolutely tremendous, but two coats of it is a bit thick. Uh, so I, I tamed some of this down with the wash in the front. And, uh, I mean, honestly, let's see what it looks like, like in some proper daylight conditions, working it out. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think in the sun, uh, it looks a little more, the, the, the red and blue are combining for a sort of turquoise look to it. And, uh, I love it. Like, I, I should have done this sooner.